Hi guys and welcome to this session. Considering we've got an acid vocal, it would make sense that we get some sort of acid synth into the mix here. So instead of using a VST, what we're actually going to do is we're going to use Ableton stock plugins and we're going to try and make a acid type sound. So we'll start off by going Command, Shift and T to create a new MIDI track. We'll just rename this as Acid Pluck. And I'm also going to change the color of our drop synth just to match the other synths. So we'll go for a blue. And then we're going to use this acid pluck to fill in the gaps with the rest of our little main section that we've got going on here. So I'm just going to create a MIDI clip. We'll go Command Shift M. And like I said, we need to be careful that it doesn't clash with anything, but we do need to fill in the gaps. So firstly, we'll load up an instance of Operator so we can hear what we're actually doing with the MIDI notes. And we'll just have a listen to that. So that's just the default operator patch. So I've just played in some basic notes, so I'm just going to Command and J to consolidate that double click on it and go command shift u to open the quantize settings and we're just going to push this up so it's 100% quantized to the 16th notes because my playing isn't amazing so now we know this is nicely on the grid and we can just shift some notes around if need be Okay guys, so there we have our little MIDI pattern in place and we've also got a little bit of a velocity change and a bit of note length in there. So now it's time to actually synthesize the sound. So thinking about the original hardware, which is the Roland TB303 synthesizer, what we need to do is choose a wave which has got a bit more content than this sine wave because we're not really going to hear this when we're filtering it, which is a main part of the sound. So we'll go for either something like a saw wave, which sounds like this, or a square wave. And you can hear there, just as I'm moving that filter, we're already starting to get that sound. And all we really need to do is add a lot of resonance and then play with the envelope settings. So I'll just show you now. So just watch out when you do crank up the resonance because you are going to get quite a loud signal coming through. So I'm just going to reduce that down a little bit. And all we're going to do now is loop this section up and start to sculpt our sound. So this envelope function here, this is what's going to assign our filter to the envelope controls that we have. So it's very much the same as the contour function that we had in the drop synth. So I'll just show you that now. So it's a bit high, so I'm just going to drop that down an octave. And because we're working in FM, these aren't actually oscillators, they're operators. And we're working in ratios. So if we move down by 0.5, that's going to be the same as moving down by an octave. So now our sound is pretty much there and it's just a case of fine tuning with things like the timing values or the envelopes that are assigned to this filter. So this envelope is regarded as a modulation source so what we can do is we can assign the attack, decay, sustain and release and by mapping these to macro controls we just get a little bit more control. So I'm going to group this with itself so we get access to the macro controls and I'll map this to macro 8 just so it's out the way because this is our envelope amount so I don't want it being anywhere near our ADSR envelope and then we'll just map the rest of the controls so we'll go for the attack first to macro 1 decay sustain level
and then macro 4 can go to the res because we're not going to need the release in this case. So this synth is sounding almost exactly how we want it, but I just want to go into a little bit more detail. So I'm going to show you the sustain, and what we're going to use this for is to basically make our notes be able to play them in a sustained or legato way. So if I turn this all the way down, we've just got a pluck, and if I turn it up, you can hear the note now sustains. And we can even go one further than that, if we go to our global and change our voices to one, and we put our glide on, and we just up the glide amount or the portamento amount. Now, we're getting a really true acid type sound. We've got a proper glide work in there. So I imagine you can probably hear how you can get all sorts of nice wobbles and LFO type sounds out of that. So for now, we'll keep that at around 30%. Something to be aware of with the envelope amount is that this does go into the minus as well. So you could actually change that in the controls if you wanted to, but I'm just going to leave that at around 65%. And if you want to add a bit of subtle motion into this track, then you could automate this. So we can just add a little bit of brightness by opening up this envelope amount. And it's just going to act as an extra avenue of expression. So that's the synthesis of our instrument finished. So I'm just going to close that down. So we just see the macro controls and I'll rename this to acid pluck. And if you want to save it, you can do as a preset. And then we're just going to clean the sound up a little bit. So we'll go for an EQ8. I'm just going to have a little bit of a gentle roll off. So a nice two pole roll off at about 120 Hertz, maybe push it up a tiny bit more just to leave this space underneath for the bass like we did earlier. And quite a common effect to add to things like the 303 or acid sounds is to use a bit of distortion or overdrive or clipping. So we can do that here just by using the overdrive plugin. And in this case, I'm not actually going to use it, but I'll just show you. So I'm sure you'll be able to recognize that sound from some older techno tracks. But for now, we'll just get rid of it. So now that we've done the synthesis part, we'll just have a look at these MIDI notes again. And what we might actually do if we copy this across is we can have a little bit of a call and response type thing going on. So we've got the call or the question, and then we've got the answer. So we'll just change the MIDI pattern ever so slightly in the second one, maybe make it a little bit simpler. So now that we have these in place, we've got a little bit of paired phrasing here as well. I'm just going to rename these. So we'll go for long and then short. And the reason we do this is just that, so it's nice and clear to see exactly what's going on from the arrangement. We've got them color coded. We've also got it written on them what they are. If we go to our percussion, as you can see, we've got this color coded, but we could also zoom in and just write exactly what's going on. So we know from a glance that this one is going to be a fill. And the beauty of this is that if we decide to then take this into session view, then we're not going to get mixed up with what's been edited and what hasn't because these two views are pretty much independent of each other. <laughs> 